Hi again. In the last video we were introducing functions and how we can use functions to give code a specific name that we can reuse over and over again in our code. What we're going to do now is take that a little bit further and explain how we can customize each, each function that we call using different things called parameters. What I have here is I have some code that's already been created. We have in the library an object called blue square, which I'm then linking as the blue square object. If we take a look here, I have var square equals new square, so I'm going to create a new instance of the blue square. I'm calling it square, and then modifying the x and y coordinates using the values 50. I then add this to the display stack using the add child statement. You'll notice now I have a function call after this, where I am repositioning the object using the reposition function. Inside the parentheses, I've added something new. This is called the parameter definition area. What I'm able to do inside the parentheses is define what parameters I can use to pass into the function that I can use inside the function itself. So what this means is I'm creating a parameter inside the function called new x. The colon that's after that is required so that I can identify what type of value new x can be. In this case, it's going to be a number. And if you notice, I have a colon and then I have number which is capitalized. If you put it a number without the capital N, it won't work. You have to make sure that it's always capitalized. After that, the rest of the function should look familiar to you. We have a, we're accessing the square instance again. We're accessing the x property of that square. And now, instead of actually giving it a specific value, we're using this named value called a variable and are then redefining that x property based on whatever's being passed into the function. At the bottom, I'm then actually calling the reposition function. And instead of keeping a blank area between the opening and closed parentheses, I'm passing in a value of 100. Let's actually run this so I can show you what happens. You'll notice now that when I run this, the blue square is not at 50-50. The blue square is a little bit further to the right which means that it's actually at the position 100. So let's actually run through the code and show you what's going on. So again, at the beginning, I'm setting the x and y coordinate to 50 and 50. I'm adding it to the display stack. What happens is that because I'm actually encapsulating the, uh, the function code uh, to redefine the x coordinate inside a function, it's going to skip this. Because unlike uh, li the linear code that I was doing in the beginning, the functions are actually ignored until they're actually called. So in this case, it's going to add the child, it's going to skip this portion, and then go directly to this last line here, where it's going to call the reposition function. It, when I call the function, it's going to take the value 100, and it's going to pass this into the function itself. So what happens here, it's then going to execute the function, and it's going to accept the value of 100 here. During the function, it's going to refer to this value as new x. So when I get to the line here on line 7, it's going, to, it's going to take the value that I've passed in as new x, which is 100, and then assign that number to the, to the property x. So then I'm repositioning the square object based on that new value, 100. So that's why when I run this, the position is now at 100 instead of 50. I can actually also redefine this and pass in other values as well. So let's say that we want to pass in a, uh, let's say we want to pass in a string as well. So I'm going to create a new trace statement in my function here. I'm going to have it say hello, and then I'm going to add a variable to the end of this, and I'm going to call it my name. My name we're going to use as another uh, we're going to use as another parameter of the function here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to call this and then actually output a greeting to myself. So if I want to add more than one property at the top here, I add a comma, and then I define the second property that I want to put in here. So in this case, I want to call it my name. Instead of a number, this is going to be a string. So I use colon and then I put in a capital string. Now I've got two properties here, and I can actually access each of these properties by using the temporary names I've given them, new x and my name. So now when I want to run this, instead of just passing in 100, I want to pass in the string Doug. 
You'll notice in the trace statement here, I'm taking this string here, hello, I have a small space after the hello, and I'm using the plus symbol, and then adding the string that I'm calling, bringing in called my name. This is called concatenation. Basically, it's just a complicated way of saying, take this string and add this string to the end of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to run this. And as you see, instead of just repositioning the object, it's also now accepting the name Doug as part of a parameter of the function, and it's outputting that to the output console. So now you know how to be able to accept parameters in your functions, use them inside the function, and then be able to do special things based on those values, like repositioning objects, creating strings, and doing whatever you want to do with those parameters with your functions. In the next video, we're going to talk about how to get values from your functions and bring them back into your ActionScript code.